High in the Peruvian Andes, there once lived a frog near a river. This poor frog was born different from the rest of her family. Her right leg was nearly twice as long as her left. Her family shunned her at every chance they could and spent as little time with her as possible. She was often alone, and in her solitude, she would stare at her limping reflection in the water's surface and cry. Near the river, and feeling just as sad as the frog, lived a girl in the cave of a condor. The giant black bird had plucked her from her happy home, where she worked and lived as a shepherdess, and carried her back to his nest, where she became his slave. Every day, she was forced to skin the dead animals he would bring back. With their meat, she would be forced to prepare huge meals to try and satisfy his endless appetite. And after, she would take their skins and beat them until they were soft enough to sleep on. If the condor wasn't satisfied with the girl's work, he would beat and abuse her. Often, the frog would see the condor passing by overhead, and she would watch him carry his prizes home. And on some evenings, when she felt particularly sad, she would follow him back to the mouth of the cave where they lived, and she would listen to the poor girl cry, <laughs> because it was the sound that reminded her of her own sad heart. Girl! Yes, sir? Have you finished beating the skins I brought home yesterday? Yes, sir. Let me see them. The girl brought them to him, and he examined them. Moments later... He threw them from the cave and slapped the girl. Ha! This is unacceptable! Do you wish for me to beat you? No! Sir! No, sir! Do better with the next set or I'll throw you under the rocks below! Yes, sir. Where is my dinner? It's ready for you, sir. Right here. What is this? Soup, sir? Oh, give it to me. She poured a large bowl of soup for the condor and handed it to him. Sir, may I have some of the soup that is left in the pot? Let me see how much is in the pot. <gasps> you can have whatever is left in the pot. But before you do, clean up this mess. Why do I keep you if you can't keep my home clean? She cleaned the spilled soup up, and when she looked in the pot, she saw there was little more than a spoonful left. When she thought about going another night without dinner, she almost cried. But she knew better. The condor would take any excuse to hit her, and her tears were one of his least favorite sounds. Sir? May I go to the stream to wash my clothes? Absolutely not! Do you take me for a fool? You would try to escape again. No, I won't. Please, please let me wash my clothes. If I beat them on the rocks, you will know that I am there. Will you allow me to go? No. As long as you hear me beating my clothes on the rocks, you'll know I'm still there. I could beat you instead. Stop talking. Please, sir. I am a mess, and I will only make your house filthier in these clothes. Very well. But be sure I hear you beating your clothes. If not, I'll fly there in a second, and you will be the one who is beaten against the rocks. Thank you. Girl. Remember what I can do to you. The girl bundled her clothes and ran to the river swiftly, and unknown to her, the frog followed as best she could. Once she was at the river, she began to beat her clothes against the rocks like she told her captor she would. But with every smack, she cried louder and louder. The frog watched her from a lily pad for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Please, don't cry. Who's there? A frog? Was it you who spoke? Yes. What is the matter? One day, the condor came and kidnapped me from my home. He took me to his cave and turned me into his slave. I have to clean his filthy home on my hands and knees until I can barely keep my eyes open. I have to cook huge meals for him, which he eats in front of me, and if I am lucky, I can scrape together a single mouthful. 
He brings dead animals back to me, and I am forced to skin and beat them until my hands are bloody. I tried to escape so many times, but he always caught me, and when he did, he would beat me so badly. I am desperate to leave him. Do you understand? I have to get away from him. I want to go home. I want to see my family again. <laughs> what is your name? Collier. Collier, I can help you. There is nothing on earth that can help me. Oh, but I can. I have a bit of magic. For a few minutes, I can change myself into any creature. If I change myself into you and keep beating your clothes, the condor will think you're still here and you can escape. Just beyond the river is a house where two very kind people live. If you make it there, they will help you find your way home. Do you think it would work? Yes, but we cannot waste another second. Collier kissed the creature on the forehead before the frog transformed into a perfect replica of the girl. The second Collier picked up the clothing and continued beating them against the rocks. And as she did, she bid the girl farewell and watched her run through the forest toward the people who would help her find her home. Girl! If you keep beating your clothes, they'll soon be tatters and I will not allow you to have new ones. Girl! The frog looked up toward the cave where the condor was screaming, but did not reply. And soon enough, the condor began his descent. Stop it at once, you stupid girl! Come back with me now! As the condor flew, the image of the girl leapt into the water and was washed away. He scanned the water for the girl, but could only find a frog on a lily pad. The condor took off and searched the river, but never found Collier. The frog, happy she could help the girl, returned home. And when she did, her family rejoiced at her sight. What is it? Is that really you? What do you mean? Of course it's me. But look at you. Stop. I know my leg is longer than the other. That's not it. What is it then? You're beautiful. Sister, you are beautiful. What do you mean? What do we mean? You're shining like a star. What is this, a joke? No, look at your forehead. The frog touched her forehead and felt something strange. She looked into the water at her reflection and saw a shimmering jewel. A jewel? It's shining like the morning star. It is, isn't it? It must have been when she kissed me. From that moment on, the frog became known as the queen of the stream, and all the creatures came to know and love the frog for the good deeds she had done.